Hello, this is John from CaveOfProgramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at multi-threading in Swing. So um, in Swing you can use standard Java multi-threading techniques and if you go to CaveOfProgramming.com, which is all one word, there you can find basically a complete course on Java multi-threading. But um, if you create a separate thread you can't update the GUI from that thread. Um, if you want to update the GUI from a separate thread you have to pass a implementation of runnable to swing utilities.invoke later. But um, fortunately, there's a class that, um, that sidesteps all the complication, um, specialized for swing, and we're going to use that class here, which is the recommended way to handle multi threading in swing. So at the moment, if I run my application, uh, I've got this tree, and uh, if I tick something in the tree, uh, it locks up my application until uh, message retrieval finishes. And of course, retrieving messages is not necessarily the ideal thing to do when you click a node in a tree. Um, but here I'm just trying to put together an application to demonstrate the basic principles. And I'll leave you to decide on aesthetics and usability. Um, so um, what I want to do is, um, in, in my um, message panel class here, I've got this, um, the problem is that this stuff here takes a while to return um, and that's what's holding up my application so I want to run that in its own thread and later on will pop up a um, progress bar while the messages are being downloaded. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a method here called retrieve messages and I'm going to implement that method here so let's cut this and um, go down a bit and right here I'm going to have private void retrieve messages and I'm going to put that code in here but I'm going to run it in its own thread and the way to do that is I'm going to create a swing worker um, and this is a template class and the first type argument that I'll supply is a list of messages and the second type of argument is going to be an integer and we'll see what the meaning of that is very shortly so um, let's just call this worker equals new uh, and then I need this stuff all again basically new swing worker and the, the constructor brackets there let's add the import for Java util list and swing worker is an abstract class so if I open a bracket here and go to um, add unimplemented methods, I can override the um, doing background method and actually there's a couple of other methods that I'm interested in here as well so I'm going to go to source override implement methods um, let's try clicking here hopefully Eclipse is not going to be difficult well let's add the semicolon because that, that might help and then right click go to source override implement methods and I'm going to override done and process and what these are is, um, firstly, doing background is a method where you put the code that you want to run in a separate thread. And Swing Worker actually um, will use uh, one of a number of available Swing threads. And it will, if no threads are available, they're all being used, um, then it will just queue your code until one is available. But here we're, we're only using one of these threads, so there's no problem. And um, I'm going to let's put this messages waiting output at the top here for the moment. And um, so, so doing background runs your code process. Um, we're going to see um, shortly that's actually for getting feedback from your uh, from your swing worker. And done is called um, when the thread finishes. So um, uh, here, so here I've got my message retrieval code, and I guess the first thing I want to do is um, I want to build up a list of messages here. So I'll say list message, and let's call it message. Uh, maybe I'll call it um, retrieved retrieved messages, and uh, let's set that equal to a new array list which will do the trick an array list of message objects 
And every time I get a message, I'll output the title for the moment. Um, I'm going to just say retrieve messages dot add message. And then after everything's finished, I'm going to say return um, retrieve messages. Return retrieve messages. Now you might guess here that the first argument in this template, these two temp of these two template parameters, is the return type of doing background. And um, the way that works is when your uh, worker thread is done, you can then say um, get, and get will return um, what, whatever type you specified for the first template parameter there. So I can say list message, um, let's call it retrieve messages again. I could call it anything, of course, equals retrieve equals get. And I need to handle um, an interrupted exception there. So I'll say surround with try catch. And um, I'll just leave these for the, for the moment. Uh, execution exception, um, you can actually throw an exception from doing background and that would show up as an execution exception here, but we're not going to go into that too deeply. Um, so basically, after, after your thread is done, you can call get and you get whatever return type you specified here. If you call get outside um, somewhere else other than done, it will just block until this is finished. So it's probably best to call it in done. And we're going to use these retrieve messages to update the GUI in a future tutorial. But for the moment, I'm just going to leave it at that. Now, the second argument here is um, an integer. And um, in this case, I made it an integer. And I'm going to say here, int count equals naught. So we're going to count how many messages are retrieved. So here I'm going to say count plus plus, and then I'll say process count. Um, sorry, not process, publish, publish. And what that does is um, process will receive whatever objects you publish, but um, because you could potentially do, um, you might publish lots of things very quickly. Um, process isn't called every time you call publish. Process is actually called, I think, on the main swing dispatch thread, um, so uh, a little irregularly. But when it is called, it will receive a list of whatever type of thing you're publishing. And that's the type that you specified in the second argument here of your swing worker template parameters. So here, um, let's, let's rename this to something else. Um, let's call it, I don't know, counts. And let's just get the last count there. So let's say int uh, last count, or maybe I could call it um, retrieved, retrieved um, equals um, counts dot get counts dot size because I just want the last argument here in um, in counts negative one. So I just want the very last one because that's the most recent value that was published. And let's let's output here. Let's say sysout um, got got uh, plus retrieved plus messages. That should do the trick. Um, so now, um, so I've created my swing worker. Um, uh, class object and it's running my message retrieval code and every time a message is retrieved it calls publish which then um, invokes process and you could use process to, in, to update your um, your GUI um, so done and process the idea is you can update the GUI there but um, you probably shouldn't update the GUI in doing background now um, I'm going to run that thread, so I'll say worker dot execute. Um, at least I think it's execute. Oh yeah, right. I'm, I'm running this in the wrong place. Let's go down a bit here. Um, so worker dot execute. There we go. And now that's just going to run, and hopefully it will tell me how many messages it's got. And let's have uh, a message for when it's done as well. So let's say sysout retrieved and plus and let's say retrieve messages dot size plus 
plus messages. And I'll run this. Um, so uh, let's just run it here. Click run. And now let's move this out of the way a bit. And I'll go to the tree and I'll tick something. And now we are retrieving, got one message, got two messages, got three messages, retrieve three messages. And the thing is that it doesn't lock up my um, my program, so you can still run it. And if, if you're happy with that, um, there's, there's probably really no need for a progress bar here, but um, I'm going to put one in uh, just because I want to show you progress bars. Um, and in the next tutorial, in fact, we're going to look at popping up a modal dialog um, in response to um, ticking one of these checkboxes, which as I say is probably not the best practice, but um, it'll give me a chance to show you modal dialogues, and then we're going to put a progress bar in that uh, modal dialogue. So join me again next time. Uh, oh yeah, and I probably should mention that um, in general you should try to avoid multi-threading in your Swing programs because if you've got too much processing going on, it can slow down your user interface. So um, if you if you do need it, uh, like try to use Swing timers instead if you can, and we'll cover those in a future tutorial. But if you really do need it, use Swing Worker because that's specialised for Swing programs. Um, so that's all for this tutorial, and in the next tutorial we'll look at uh, modal dialogues. And until next time, happy coding.